It's called Ancient Strategies to Recruit. Okay, Ancient Strategies on how to recruit. Now pay attention, y'all. <clears throat> this is the formula. And this will work no matter what industry you're in. I promise. It does not matter what industry you're in. Oh, I do nail videos. Oh, I do makeup and beauty videos. Oh, I do uh, freaking uh, karate videos. None of that stuff matters. Okay? I'm going to show you something. Okay? And this is how I built the people that follow my strategies and everything. Okay? Remember, the scripture says if you... If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. All right. So the wisdom that I speak come from experience taught to me by the scriptures. You understand? So I'll learn things and philosophies and strategies in the Bible, even if they're ancient to the regular people. And then I'll implement them in today's time. And it still has the same effect. OK, so check this out. The cult formula is, is basic. It's very simple. It's audience plus beliefs, plus influence. That is it. Audience, plus beliefs, plus influence. So influence, guys. Influence, that's you being charismatic. That's you uh, uh, being, uh, being able to articulate what you're trying to get across. That's you being a person that draws attention to yourself. Something has to be uh, uh, peculiar. Something has to be unique about you. OK, so all you have to do is look within to figure that out, because God gave every last one of us a gift. But the problem is nowadays everybody is being taught to be a clone. Oh, you see this going viral. So you go and do the same exact thing, but you don't even add anything you to the uniqueness of the video or whatever it is. So you have to figure out what's unique about you. It's not difficult. Everybody. Oh, that's them. They're special. No. God don't make mistakes. That means every last one of you guys watching this right now are unique. Every last one of you right now have seeds within you. Pause. Every last one of you have a gift that he gave you, a purpose that he sent you here for. And if you will turn everything off, stop watching everybody else and spend some time with yourself. Take a vacation with just yourself. Not to go to the island and look at females. None of the extra dumb stuff just to spend time with yourself. And I guarantee you, in the moments of silence, you will find out exactly what's within you. Once you do that, you'll realize how different you are from everybody else. And hopefully you'll discover your purpose. And then that is where you get the influence from, where anytime you come across a person, they're like, yo, I ain't never met nobody like you before. That's the influence part. Now, <clears throat> we have beliefs. OK, so the scripture says that every beast loveth his like. The scripture says that you shall not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So you're supposed to find your group of people. You're supposed to find your clan or, or your clan is going to find you and they're going to resonate with what you believe, what you talk about. So when Christ was here, he was looking for kingdom. See, he, he knew that people wanted the kingdom, but they were left astray. They were going astray by Pharisees. They were taught the wrong way. They were taught they couldn't be forgiven. They were taught they were supposed to do animal sacrifice and all of that. So he was looking for the sinners that really wanted salvation, really wanted uh, belief. And he went in the midst of them. Why is it looking all humid, humid in here? Anyway, all right. So beliefs. So you got your influence. You're unique. All right. Then you find your beliefs like, OK, so Christians. All right. But it's a certain type of Christian, like all Christians aren't followers of Christ. Right. So you see what I'm saying? So who shares beliefs with you? And you'll find those believers inside this part right here. The audience. So this is where you create your leverage list. This is the fun part. You create your leverage list. Yeah. All right. Your leverage list otherwise known as a dream 100 list, but I call it a leverage list because it could be way more than that. So this is where you take the time, you write out a list of people, influencers, entities, companies, it doesn't matter. People who own audiences already inside these audiences are already your freaking believers. 
They're already your believers gathered for you to speak. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Now, this is super powerful. Probably one of the most important classes I've done before. Please make sure you guys don't get distracted by the suggested or related section over here or your phone ringing or some BS. Oh, it's Saturday. I got to get ready for the club tonight. But then Monday, I'm still broken. I don't know what to do. Please make sure y'all take this seriously because this can change your life. It doesn't matter if it's a thousand or a hundred people. Christ or Yahweh Shai only had 12 disciples. He only started off with 12. It's some uh, it's some dude with a book or some a, a thousand followers or fans or something like that where they make it seem like you need to. Yo, Yahweh Shai spread his message to the four corners of the earth, starting with 12 people, put it on autopilot after he taught them and went back to heaven. Ain't been back, well, spiritually, but ain't been back physically since. And everything is running seamlessly. Every day, new people are introduced to him and his message. Every day. That's an autopilot perfect system. That is the perfect cult. You understand what I'm saying? So he had influence. He positioned himself. The only begotten son. He was unique. He had miracles he could do. He could do what other men could not do. Then he had a belief. He had the belief that the kingdom was at hand. And he shared that same belief with the true prophets, not the Pharisees, the true prophets. So he had the beliefs covered. And then he had audience, audience. Other prophets had audiences, other churches and synagogues and other uh, 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 other, um, you know, people had audiences and he spoke in front of them. That's the formula. And his sheep heard his voice just like yours will. You don't need magic or anything, guys. <laughs> you use this formula, your people, now you're on a city that can't be hid. You understand? You're on a hill, a, a city that's on a hill that cannot be hid. Now, now you're like a beacon. Like you're in front of that audience. You're unique and you share the same beliefs with them. So they resonate with you. It's literally impossible for, for a percentage of them not to start coming up to you and saying, uh, 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 saying to you the same thing they said to Yahweh Shai. Yo, how do I join what you got going on? He went and spoke. He didn't beg for people to follow him or subscribe to him. That's why I'm not going to say it no more. If you don't subscribe, then you just don't freaking subscribe. But my tribe will. You see what I'm saying? So like he would speak and he would leave and then it'll be my, uh, 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 hordes of people following him trying to become disciples. But you got to have those first two. You got to mark off that you resonate with the same beliefs of the people inside that audience. And it has to be something unique. You can't come speaking the exact same thing that the people that were previously on that podcast or interview or a television show or whatever it is. You can't say exactly the same. Nothing's going to stand out. Why would a person follow you then? You see what I'm saying? You have to be unique. For example, a couple years ago, at the beginning of the scandemic, 2022, I mean, 2020, before we moved out here or uh, left the Americas, right? I came with the godfather of drop servicing course because I had so much experience with agencies and doing drop servicing before it was named the drop servicing. So when I saw that it was trending, I'm like, that's what they're calling drop servicing, service arbitrage. They just renamed it, repackaged it. It was, I've been doing that forever. You understand what I'm saying? So I jumped into the game of service arbitrage that that marked off the audience and the beliefs part. But then I was unique. So I became an influencer in drop service. And why? Because while everybody else was teaching you to go and uh, uh, re-upload other people's Fiverr gigs and then get a cut out of that and all of that extra lame bull crap. I was teaching you how to drop service local businesses and get high ticket commissions. You see what I'm saying? So it was it was a message that they have not heard before. And it drew the attention of that audience. You see, so the formula freaking works. It, it works. So check this out. Then same thing. Um, freaking chat GBT came around. Everybody else was just talking about article writing with it. I was like, no, 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 no. Use it to create assets and monetize those assets. So we dropped the asset empire. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It, it works. The formula works, y'all. It works. Okay. And I don't do no, no paid traffic or none of that extra stuff. But people, my people hear 
my voice. They resonate with me. They like, yo, I didn't, I, I've been wanting something different, but everybody keeps speaking the same thing, right? So now let's come over here. We're going to check out Matthew chapter five, verse one. All right. So, hey, are you guys fired up, man? Y'all feeling this yet? Let me know in the chat, man. Put a hashtag, yes, Lord, up in there. Okay, so we got Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. So this is the proof, because the scripture says, prove all things. Be ready to give every man an answer. So here's the proof that you need an audience. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. It says, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and his mouth and taught them. OK, so he spoke in front of audiences, in front of crowds. Why leverage, man? He said that this the kingdom repent for the kingdom is at hand needs to be taught throughout the four corners of the earth. If you're talking to one person at a time. It's extremely difficult for you to spread that message. Back then, you, it was no internet for one video to go viral and all that. You had to depend on word of mouth. You understand? Word of mouth uh, advertising. So you had to hope that in, you created some type of impact with some amount of people. So the best way to do that is to have a nice amount of people that you're speaking to and you can take the percentages out of them that are actually going to take action on what you're talking about. Everybody is not going to do it, right? And we all know that, right? So now we go to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 2. Matthew chapter 13, verse 2. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. Great multitudes were gathered together unto him. It's very rare you're going to see your house just by itself just rolling by itself you need to be that same way is this new channel man i found that channel blew up shows you how selfish people are that channel blew the hell up and and it's just talking about a one person business y'all can look it up if you if that's your if that's your type of thing but <laughs> that's not biblical it's not biblical who are you you think you're better than christ christ he could have did everything by himself, but he chose 12 people. And he chose you. OK, so it says and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So he always positioned himself in front of an audience so that they'll be able to hear his thunderous voice. He said it was his voice was like a, a thousand waters or something like that, right? That's loud, right? But he spoke openly. Okay. Now we're going to go to Luke. Luke. So, the uh, reason why I'm giving you these scriptures in, uh, 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 in particular is to reprogram, to help you be reprogrammed. We have this dream of success where it only takes me. I'm just, it's just with me. Ain't nobody help me, cuz. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is what's slowing you down and holding you back. Once you embrace having an army of believers, I don't care that army is a hundred armies. You could do, you know, you remember that movie 300? You remember 300 with Leonidas and them, even though that was our story. Do y'all remember that? And how he, how they, them 300, they tore into that freaking uh, Persian army of 10,000. Told them up. Because they had a unique fighting strategy never seen before. So it was easy. So that small number allowed them to tear them up. So how can you do that? You position yourself uniquely, but then you go into your audience, you teach them how to become versions of what you do. So they can have the same impact and then it just snowballs, becomes an avalanche. Don't forget a, a freaking avalanche starts off as a freaking snowball, man. And it builds momentum once it's pushed. All right. So it says, and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples. See, they had his backup, man. This ain't no game. What's up, Stanley? 
How you doing? He said, wow, this is nice. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, man. All right. So he came down with them and stood in the plane. Like, dude, everything I'm teaching y'all, this is the stuff that I strive to put into my life because I know it's going to position me as different from anybody else out there. Any, anybody else that don't know this and don't apply this to their industry is, is literally going to be impossible for them to do what I do because I am doing what scripture do. And most people are doing what the world tells them to do. And the Bible says the world is contrary to the Bible. If you want success, you please the Lord. You understand? So he came down with them and stood in the plain and in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of Judea. Pay attention. I want y'all to look at these places that I'm about to name as audiences because they literally are. So you write down on a list different YouTube channels and different podcasts that has your audience, your believers that would gladly pay for your products and services. I mean, the formulas in the scriptures, y'all. No, no, no. I just go to the Bible for my spirituality. That's why you broke. That's why you're struggling. He said that we're supposed to come to him for all things. Do you think your daddy, your earthly daddy, just likes it when you come to him when you just want some money or when somebody messing with you? Or do you think your father rather you come to him about everything, advice about women, uh, becoming of a man, when you're going into your puberty, when you're going to buy your first house, advice on what type of car to get, where should you move in the world, should you start a business or should you go to college? A father appreciates when his children come to them for everything. You understand? So when we think we can just go on Sunday, which is the wrong day, to church and enhance ourselves, and then Monday through Saturday, we all wicked and don't give God no type of attention. That's our father. But you expect to be super successful. No, you go and you seek his face in the scripture for all parts of your life. Your relationships, all of that stuff is right there in the book. He said, you ask not, so you have not. You ask not, so you have not. So whatever we struggling with is probably our fault. Book sitting there on your grandma's desk collecting dust. Anyway, let me move on. So pay attention. It says, in a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him. Are y'all hearing this? So these other channels, these other influencers, they're, they're countries. No, literally. Like, dude, like if you go and look at how many subscribers and followers they got, some of them have audiences, the population of a freaking city or a country. Am I lying? 100,000 people, 2 million people, all of these are literally the populations of cities and countries and stuff, some of them, right? So look, stop looking, just look, look beneath this. OK, and apply scripture to your life. So pay attention. He's came down with them, stood in the plane and the company of his disciples. So imagine you going on a podcast or a show. This is him going on a podcast or a show sway in the morning. You got your little crew in there when you're about to freestyle. Right. OK. <laughs> and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem. This is Judea is uh, uh, the breakfast club. Uh, Jerusalem is sway in the morning, okay? And from the sea coast of Tyree, and that is uh, uh, um, the freaking social proof podcast. And Sudan is, uh, um, I don't know, impulsive from, I don't know, one of those podcasts. That's millions of people came to see you talk about your products and services and how you 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 can position them and help, in th help them, all right? So check that out. All right. So it says, which came to hear them. So guess what? When you go on these podcasts, they're going to promote you. They're going to talk about it on our social medias. Oh, the next upcoming interview is going to have Yazreel or Anti-Job University or or is going to have Stanley Jean on there uh, and, 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 you know, Marcus Pullen. Right. There's going to have them on there. Right. So they're going to talk about it to their audiences and they're going to come there to hear you. 
and to be healed of their diseases. So the disease that you might be positioned to heal people from is being broke or being overweight or being lazy, whatever your product or your service is. So Christ, he came there to heal them of their diseases and their uh, spiritual demons and everything. It says, and they were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. So he healed multitudes of people all at once. So for those of you doing one-on-one -on -one freaking coaching and stuff, you're doing a disservice. You could do so much more. This is why I tell y'all stop putting a number on how much you want to make because you're literally limiting yourself and you're holding, your, holding other people back from being serviced. Oh, I just want to make X five, 10, that means you are only limiting yourself to help a couple people. Don't put a number on yourself. You enslaving yourself. I want to service and heal as many people as I possibly can. So I'm searching and seeking out audiences. I'm seeking out audiences. You understand? Multitudes like Christ. Multitudes. And I'm going to heal them all. And out of them, multitudes, my sheep will hear my voice. So it says they were they that were vexed with unclean spirits. They were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there were virtue out of him. So when you hear that part about the whole multitude sought to touch them because they realized how holy he was, they knew if they touched his cloth or touched his skin or something, some of them could be healed. Right. So in, you might not be able to do it exactly like Christ, but if somebody touched you, Pauls, by becoming part of your mastermind, by joining your, uh, you know, your group or, or uh, purchasing your course or your product or even reading your book, they're becoming closer and it's changing their mind, it's reshaping their life. Do y'all understand? The formula is right here. You don't need to, you don't need to watch me. You don't need to watch a uh, Hormozy, you don't need to watch a Tony Robbins, you don't need to watch a Eric Thomas, none of that stuff. You open up these scriptures. If you look at it with new eyes instead of the way your grandma took you to church and you just with the damn tambourine and foam at the mouth like a demon, if you look at the scripture as a history book, a prophetic book, and a life instruction manual, that's literally what it is. That's what it is. You'll become wiser than you ever thought before. You're supposed to become a master in your skill. That's what the scripture says. So whatever your niche is, you're not supposed to be mediocre. You're literally supposed to start dominating. That's what I'm on this year, man. I, I, I hope y'all on that with me. So it says, and he healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. Watch this and said, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Man, look, it ain't no book out there like the Bible. It's just not. I'm sorry. I can tell you go read How to Grow Rich Using Leverage. You can go read that. That's cool. I love that book. You can go read The Laptop Millionaire. You can go read Win Influence and Friends. You can go read. <laughs> you can read all of that stuff. Freaking Click Funnels, uh, 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 um, Expert Secrets, Traffic. You can read all of that. But none of it is going to be able to change your life and your business like the Bible. The biggest companies in the world get their stuff from here. They don't get them from no influencer books. They don't. Even if they're non-believers, they still get their stuff from the Bible. Bill Gates, all of them, they get their formula from the Bible. McDonald's, all of that stuff. Apple, that stuff all comes straight from here. Even the best movies that you like are all stories from the scriptures. Let your ways be established. Okay, so it says, look, this is the part that got me hyped. My bad, y'all. It says, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. So this is after he healed that multitude right in front of them. You know, they had to be like, um, damn, jaws dropped and flabbergasted. We'll use that. <laughs> okay, he said, and it said, he told them, blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of the most high. Yours is the kingdom of Yah. All right. And this is what he gave them instruction to do. So when you're when you when you are an influence, when you reach your believers in front of that audience, 
all you'll literally have to tell them to do is, yo, join me. Let's go do this together. It shouldn't be no hard pitch. This is why I don't teach closing tactics no more. I don't want to deal with people that don't want to deal with me. We're not going to do no closing tactics or none of that. You get your irresistible offer and that's it. That's all. Because if you position yourself to leverage others, you'll be able to profit recycle. All right. So now we're going to go to John chapter six. Uh, John chapter six, verses five. When Yahweh Shai then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? So this is cut off, right? This is where it's supposed to, let me see, where is it? Uh, it's supposed to pick up. Where are we at? Okay. It's talking about this right here. Okay. So he was speaking to a crowd. This is about the five loaves, right? And the two fish. The prophets was talking about how it was getting dark, right? And they was talking about how, yo, the markets are going to close and these people ain't going to be able to eat. Right? He was talking about, yo, the market's going to close. Christ, you got to let these people go home. You done already talked enough, man. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody saying that to Christ, right? Christ like, look, excuse me. <laughs> they don't need to go nowhere. Watch this. Look, he said, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? You're like, why we, why we got to do all that? We feeding them right here. So we're going to pick back up on that. Let's go to Mark. Four and one, because y'all y'all got to see, like it was a lot of people there. It wasn't just five thousand people; it was five thousand people and their families. So imagine that. Okay, like, dude, this is why he was positioned as the only begotten son. Who else could do something like that? So you need to position yourself as the only in your niche. If you position yourself as the only in your niche. It's, it's, all, it's literally, it's almost impossible for you to go in front of an audience and not walk away with half of them. But you have to position yourself as the only. Christ was the only. Yo, it's prophets that knew how to speak the scripture. It's, it's the Pharisees, they knew the law and they knew how to speak the scripture. But he was the only one that came to the world and actually fulfilled everything he was supposed to do perfectly avoided all temptation and everything and did a little extra stuff while he was here you understand so he was only so how do you not follow somebody like that especially when you're seeing it in person how do you give that impact in your industry how do you give that impact with your product or your service where they can't compare you they can't say yeah man i bought marketing services from this other company and you know it was kind of like what you do and all of that that's the most annoying thing I ever heard in my life. I hate when a person try to compare me to somebody. If they can compare you, then you're not unique. Either that or they just ain't dug deeper into your life and what you stand for. And if that's the case, you can't really, you know, be, be mad about it. They need to go do some research. But just like, dude, who can you compare to Christ? So he did it right. Right. So Mark four and one says and he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude. Mm. A great multitude. Y'all see this so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. So your house, I got in a boat. Right. And like. It was kind of like a dock type situation or whatever, right? And he sat in a boat so he can be like in front of them. Look kind of like how nowadays we have a stage, you know, so you'll get on the stage and then you got the crowd right there below you or whatever. So he stood where they could properly see him and hear him. So he'll go get in a boat and they'll stand on the shore and they'll just give all his attention 
uh, all their attention to him. They didn't have no cell phones where they was just going to be looking and strolling while he's talking and doing no dumb stuff, right? Okay, so he was able to teach them. Like, he was fervent in business, like the scripture says you're supposed to do. So now this picks back up. This next one picks back up where it was talking about John 6 and 5. Luke chapter 9, verse 16. Stanley says, I want to deal with you. I need to create or purchase some assets. All praises to the most high God, right? But I'm not selling nothing right now, Stanley, man. But you'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to work together. All praises to the most high. He said, I receive. Please help me. I have a lot to help. All praises to the most high. I got your back, man. Pause. So just, just make sure you stick around, man. Just stick around, all right? Um, Luke says, then he took the five loaves and the two fishes. Now, remember, remember, it was not just 5,000 people, all right? In the scripture, most of the time, it, it talks about status or name, like the house of, of David. My name is David, right? Or now, Yah's real. But it'll be like the house of my last name, pretty much, right? Even though I got my son right here, my wife and my two daughters and stuff, right? They'll just name me. Right. So when it says five thousand is not is not just five thousand, their families were out there, too. If you read deeper into the, the scriptures, they, they had their people with them, too. So imagine that. But even if it was just five thousand, right, it is five loaves of bread. So remember, they was they were trying to get Christ to shut down like, yo, you already talked and stuff. All right. You already had the conversation, dude. Like you didn't already preached. Right. Like the, it's getting dark and the market's about to close. These people need to go so they can get some food so they can eat. Christ was like, why they got to go? See, that showed the lack of faith. You can take little and create many. Don't forget that in the wilderness, all the way back in the Old Testament, the most high God made it rain manna and quail out of nothing, out of nowhere. So we always think we need some like, yo, if I just get a little bit more of this, then I'll start my business. If I just uh, uh, make this much money, then I'll get into that program, that course or buy that book. If I just make a little bit more of this, then I quit my job and start this and do that. If I just if I just get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yo, he made it rain quail and manna. And then we complained about that, too. Anyway. So Yahweh was like, listen, y'all don't know by now. Why do they got to go to some market when I'm right here? You supposed to hunger and thirst after righteousness. The scripture says you're not supposed to worry about what you're going to eat on the morrow. That means it will be taken care of. Same thing with money, man. So if you're standing in your purpose, you'll be taken care of. When you're when you're out there uh, standing in your purpose and your gift, not on some mystical, magical, or, or or motivational stuff, it's the truth. You said, look, create an asset, schedule interviews in front of the audiences that that resonate with what you believe, and shine. And shine, you're literally going to make money. Literally going to walk away with followers. Literally, if I could just make it simple. Those steps right there. That's it. Anybody that thought, ooh, what's the cheat code? There you go. An asset. That can be a book. That can be a course. That could be a mastermind. That could be just a website you want visitors to. Whatever it is, you create or purchase an asset and you find a, a, a person with an audience with, full, full of your believers. And then you go and speak in front of them. Christ did it. He said, there's nothing new under the sun. We're like, okay, but what about the SEO? Okay, yeah, cool. You use that for your positioning. That's good, right? But to tell you the truth, like quit thinking you need everything before you start. No, go, start. The scripture says, first seek the kingdom and his righteousness and the rest will be added. So your gift and your purpose 
your God-given gift and purpose, what he sent you here for is what you're supposed to be honing and, and crafting and perfecting right now and seeking how to distribute that gift and not upbraid it, not hold it back. Just give your gift, just give it away. You understand? And guess what? Those people will be attracted to you. Some people are going to be annoyed by you. Some people tell me, oh, this is an entrepreneur channel. Why are you sitting here doing uh, Bible classes and stuff like that on air? Those aren't my people. Those aren't my people, y'all. You can't divide the Bible. You can't put restrictions and chains on God. I talk about God every day because he's everywhere and he created everything. He created the computer for your freaking internet to be on for you to start the business on. So why would I separate him from business? I need him all the freaking time. And so do y'all. No such thing as luck. And when you know there's no such thing as luck, that means that you, it's a formula out there for you. So all you got to do is figure the formula out. And the best way to start looking is to start reading. Once you start reading, you start implementing. Don't look at, oh, but this is old. They didn't have computers back then. It don't matter. They had people back then. And guess what? Guess what they have now? People. We evolve slowly. So pretty much everything in the scriptures <laughs> that worked back then will still work right now today. I don't care what new mediums or platforms there are. He stood in front of the people. That's all you need to know. So guess what? In your mind, you should be figuring out how do I get in front of the people? What kind of people? The ones that share my same beliefs. How do I position myself unique to them to where they call out to me and they want to be a part of what I have? This is the formula for how to create a cult like following. Not sitting here with tripping off trips, tips and tricks and tactics to go viral and stuff. Look, it's formulas for that, too, in the scriptures. But your main focus is not a, a certain amount of number. It's about the devotion and dedication that your following have uh, has to you. It's people that I am in contact with that's been in every last one of my courses since 2015. I don't even ask them. They just see me with something new on a channel and they just automatically, it's people I ain't even talked to in forever and I'll we'll look at the dang on uh, um, opt ins or the payments, and I'm like that name looks familiar. And then they in all of my dang on stuff. Like, how do you create that? You have to be unique. You have to be unique. Hey, how you doing, Beatrice? Beatrice says this is what sets you apart from the rest. Yes, Lord. I'll praise it to the Most High. I appreciate y'all for showing up. Uh, yo, like I said, man, like it don't matter what other people think. Of, you know, well, to an extent, it does um, because you're supposed to be a beacon, so people are watching you. But what I'm saying is, when it comes to your purpose, God already has your people for you. So everybody is not going to like you. Everybody is not going to. I mean, it, if they did, it wouldn't be a cult, would it? <laughs> Right. Like it wouldn't be a cult if everybody liked you. Like these are your people. So your goal should not be to get everybody to like you. You want to reach the masses on an audience scale big enough to reach your people. So if your people turn out to be 500 dedicated people that love you, that, that support you, you understand that got your back, that that want to be a part of what you have going because they understand that your intentions are pure. Hopefully your intentions are pure, right? Don't do this if your intentions aren't pure. We don't need no more Jim Joneses out in this mug, right? Uh, <laughs> but if your intentions are pure, like, dude, I mean, the, the, uh, the saying there's somebody out there for everybody is true. So don't sit there and think, yo, man, like I got to go and do a business in this industry or I got to go start a YouTube and an Instagram channel about this topic. You don't have to. You can literally sit with yourself, write down the things that are unique to you. I guarantee you 
I guarantee you as an audience for it. I guarantee you as a tribe for it. And when you stand true in that, stand true in your uniqueness, your, your, your weirdness, you understand? Like, that's a superpower, dude, because you immediately become the only one that stood out to speak for that tribe. People come to me and say, look, listen, I, didn't, I couldn't find no other channel that was talking about this. Like even people that think my, uh, 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 my voice is annoying or they don't like when I speak the scriptures, the way I put business, they can't go to many other places for that. So they be like, yo, even though I don't like when you do this or do that, I still have to come back to this channel. How do you make it to where you're like that? Where people got to deal with you because you're so unique, you're different. And, and, and you're helping people. Okay. All right. So he said, watch this, Luke chapter nine, verse 16. Hey, what's up, light skin virgin? That's the brother on here. <laughs> that's my brother right there. Okay. That's Keith Sweat for y'all that don't know. He got, a, he got a trade in school where he teach you how to like trade and do that type of stuff, right? Um, um, I forgot what it's called. I don't have experience in that, y'all, but he does. So y'all can hit him up whenever y'all want, uh, want some tutelage on that type of thing. Um, okay, so Luke chapter 9, verse 16 says, then he took the five loaves and the two fishes. Watch this. And looking up to heaven, he blessed them because all gifts come from where? Say it loud. You see, my kids know. All gifts come from above. So even though Christ was the most powerful man to ever grace the earth, he still knew that, like, hey, I need the power from the most high God. Watch this, because with my father, nothing is impossible. See, we, we lost all of that because we came, became adults in this dumb generation right here where we have no imagination or belief about anything. But he's never been taught this belief. Because he was there from the beginning. The scripture says it in Genesis. Yeah, he came here in a flesh with y'all later on, but his spirit was with the most high God when he shaped the world. So he didn't have the disadvantage or the crippling uh, uh, um, crap that we have about ourselves where we, lim we put limitation on ourselves where we have this belief. I don't, I don't think I will be able to do that. That, that goal is too big. That is, this, this. yo, they, he was literally with him when he, he, cra he, he handcrafted the mountains. Right? While we still trying to figure out how to get enough faith to move them. Like they, he helped them make them. You understand? So he didn't have the crippling disadvantage of disbelief. So he looked up to his father. That's why he was looking at them. And that's why he kept on telling the disciples, y'all faith is low. It sucks. You're like, y'all, y'all don't really believe in this stuff, do you? Like, dang, like increase your faith, right? So it said, then he took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. Watch this and break. And he gave them, he gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. Now imagine that. Five loaves of bread. You got 5,000 people plus their family. And two fish. Now, I'll give you a more worldly example. I remember my first time going to a casino in St. Louis. It was when this new casino had opened up. I don't suggest casinos or gambling or anything, but I was just turning legal age. And I was broke as a mug. I remember like I ain't had no money for real, for real. <laughs> but we was just mobbing and stuff. And I, just, I was curious about the casino. And we went in there. And I was like, yo, I ain't been to like waste no money or whatever. I remember I put a quarter in. Out of that quarter. I mean, I ain't get rich or nothing, but I got 60 bucks. <laughs> it was in the slots, right? Pause. I put a quarter in there and I got 60 bucks and knowing me, you know, me at the time, I don't trust nothing. I was like, all right, if I try it again, they're going to take that 60. So I just took the 60 bucks and me and my homeboys had some McDonald money. So we just left. <laughs> but my point is, if I approached my friends, let's say I only had that quarter. And I was like, listen, we need to get something to eat. 
All they would have saw was that quarter, not what I could do with the quarter or what I can pull out the quarter. A lot of you guys think that you're nothing or you need to add things to you. You don't look and say, what can I pull out of myself? What can I pull out of myself to make money? You got books with inside you. Some of y'all got baby mamas that you successfully get along with. Do you know that's, that you could teach a freaking course or a seminar for men to figure out how to like tame their freaking baby mamas, right? That's a, that's a book. That's a mastermind. That's a course. Some of y'all have had nine to fives and you achieved getting out of those nine to fives. Some of you have, are still at nine to fives, but you've achieved being able to have a successful side business and make money. Those are books and courses and channels, all type of stuff. Do you understand that you already like, yo, let me get this uh, charge on my computer finna go dead, man. All right. Do you understand, like, Dr. Miles, I don't know if y'all know Dr. Miles Monroe, but if, if you do, you're you're blessed. If not, then you need to go and check out Dr. Miles Monroe. I don't recommend too many, like, humans, but he he went off biblical business principles just like we do over here on this channel. Uh, I never really seen another person besides him and Myron Golden break down business principles biblically uh, similar to how I like to do it, right? Um, so Dr. Miles, he has this analogy of the apple, okay? And when you guys realize this, you'll realize that you already have your coat. You already have your following. Watch this. So he says, he said, when you look at an apple, what do you see? If you said you just see an apple, you're wrong, right? If you just, just like I said, you know, most people would have saw that quarter. But after putting it in a slot, it turned to 60 bucks, right? So we need to learn how to look be, be beyond the surface of stuff. Look, be, when you go look in the mirror, don't just see flesh and, and, and bone just standing there or somebody on some journey to become something. Don't just see a nine to five worker or just a mother or just a father or just a brother. You need to see your purpose within yourself, your gift. When he sent you here, he sent you. You are already equipped. You are already equipped with what you have. You sent her looking externally for what so you can add to yourself to become something great when it's already there. I promise you, it's already there. You can acquire skills or you can sharpen iron, sharpens iron. You can become part of a community and become better, but you need to focus on figuring out what your dang on purpose is. Stop with the tips and the tricks and accumulating of a million books and all of that. No, chill. So when you see an apple, what do you see? Do you just see an apple? Well, Dr. Miles, he broke it down. He said, when I see an apple, and when God sees an apple, he doesn't see just an apple. He sees the generations. He sees a forest of apple trees. Because inside that apple are seeds. And inside those seeds are new apple trees. And when those new apple trees blossom, they drop new apples. And when inside those apples are more seeds. And those seeds will grow more trees, which will birth fruit called apples with seeds in them. And generations later, you got a forest, don't you? So if you look at yourself like that, like, yo, I'm just me. No, you're not just you. When you bear fruit, like, look, like when you focus on what, what you truly are, your works will bear fruit. You understand? Like, and, and, and you'll have an army. You'll have a forest that just came from within you. But you got to let yourself, you got you to pull that tree from without you. All right. So it says, he gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. It started off with five loaves and two fish. Everybody probably thought he was crazy as hell. He just handed the disciples a couple pieces and said, go ahead, hand it out. And out of nowhere, like, I don't know how, they just, it just never ended. Like, he, they was able to just pass it out to everybody. And guess what? It was so much left over that he, he told the disciples, don't leave no crumbs on the ground. Make sure y'all go through and pick up everything. So five, five 
five loaves and two fish turned into more than enough for over 5,000 people and families. That shows you that you're already more than enough to achieve what you're sent here to achieve, but you don't know it because you haven't spent enough time with yourself yet. Do me a favor, cut every dang on thing off. Have the most boring weekend that you can possibly have. Don't watch me, don't watch nobody else. Don't listen to no music, uh, seclude yourself, like, like isolate yourself. You understand what I'm saying? And just have a piece of paper there. And let your mind roam free. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to meditate and all of that. Just lay back and let your mind roam free. And I guarantee you the imaginations that you had as a child before you had the freaking responsibilities and a slave job will start to pop back up out of nowhere again. And you start, you grab a book. I mean, you grab a notebook and you start scribbling. You start writing all of those things down because that's the real you that they suppressed. Because as soon as you get out of high school, they immediately say, grow up. F what you was dreaming about. And you can't remember it no more. Because as soon as you get that job, they start hitting you with stuff with credit. And you start buying things. And then now you're working to keep those things. So now you don't have enough time to remember your dreams or who you are. Yo, literally, I did a video uh, the other day talking about uh, why we left America for good. And, you know, I was going to title it why I sold everything and, and left America because that was the keyword that most people was using. But I'm not most people. Right. I had to remember we ain't even sell. <laughs> I was so ready to leave that hell hole, Babylon, that. We just gave everything away. We opened our door and we told all our neighbors, y'all go in there and take what you want. And for the car, I just said, whatever's in your pocket, just give it to us. And, and my wife said that the dude only had 250 bucks. And we said, there you go, whatever. Like, there you go. Don't wait. Don't sit here and think you need, like, listen, when you have a purpose, like go. You have more than enough we left the freaking country during the, like right at the beginning of the scamdemic. God protected us, my entire family. None of us have been sick from that crap at all, ever. Since 2020, we was in a, on, on a Greyhound. We went through the freaking airports multiple times, nothing. God covers you. I'm promising you. You understand what I'm saying? He covers you. You have everything you need. Already, and when you when you realize that you evolve and become this whole different person, well, actually, you become the person within you. This is just flesh. You you start to reflect your spirit. This is a casing. This is just a cocoon. This is why he says, "Don't fear the first death, because you weren't sent here anymore. After sin was created, we supposed to die." So what you're supposed to be doing is remembering the purpose that your spirit within you was sent here for, fulfilling that purpose so that you can leave her empty and pass this first board of the game. So what is your purpose? How can you influence and in in impact the people in a positive way before you leave her? Okay, Matthew 4 and 19. So when you are on this podcast interview, a radio show, whatever it is, and you're in front of this, this audience, like I said, you, you shouldn't have to do a hard pitch. If you got on there, you were positioned uniquely, and you're in front of believers. Remember, you said don't be unequally yoked with non-believers. Don't be, don't be yoked with non-believers. Okay, because they ain't going to hear you. They're not going to hear you. Okay, so make sure when you're choosing these podcasts or these places that got audiences, if you're buying shout outs from influencers or whatever, you make sure this audience contains your believers already. You can go and look in the comment sections of these prior interviews and these videos and these podcasts, see the comments, see what their believers believe in. And then you're like, okay, I want to go on that one. 
And now you can craft your message before you go on there in a way that it shocks and awes and it wows them and it speaks and resonates with their spirit. The spirit bears witness, right? That You don't need hard sales after that. This is what he said. He said, and he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men because one of them were already a fisherman. So he spoke his language. So he was like, look, hey, you think it's cool to fish for fish? <laughs> I'm going to make you fishermen of men. I'm going to make you fishers of men. That's all he said. And they dropped their businesses, dropped their families, dropped their prior engagements, dropped anything they had scheduled, and they followed him on top of knowing that they could possibly die. He said, when you follow him, you need to know that you're going to meet persecution and possibly death. And a lot of the prophets and disciples did. And they still did it. That's creating a cult following. Come on, man. Come on. The formula is right here. Imagine becoming so powerful that people will follow you, even though they know they're going to meet their end. Now, I don't want nobody to meet their end. Or, or I'm not saying you should, but I'm talking about the intensity of the devotion that comes from creating a movement like that. Like, come on. I mean, that's 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 crazy right there. Right. The formula is right here in scripture. Y'all thought I was going to give you some notepad full of tips and tricks and tactics and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you crazy because I told y'all only go off of law. I only go off of law. And the stories within the scripture, that's how I learned. Videos are entertaining. These men, these, these Parmoses, these, these people, yeah, they cool. They make money. They, they're good. But they're just men, man. It is fun. It's entertainment to me. Like, it's, it's not impressive. I'm impressed with this. I'm not impressed with what man can do because... Like God told us with him that anything was possible. So why would I be impressed with, with what man do? But what is awesome is when a person's purpose can shine through them, through all the freaking distractions, through all the devil's temptations on this earth, you still come here and you fulfill your purpose. Yahweh did it, and he did it by the age of 33. Ah, okay. So we got Matthew chapter 28 right here. And this is what he told his audience. This is what he told his followers, his cult members. So, hey, when y'all think of a cult, just replace that word with a group of believers. Technically, a Facebook group is a cult. I mean, a mastermind is a cult. It's just a group of believers. They've attached this negative connotation to it because of the history of greedy and covetous men on this world. But the word cult is just a word. It can be good. It can be evil. You can stab somebody with a pencil or you can write beautiful poetry with it. Do you blame the pencil? No. So cult means what it means. Not anything negative. Okay. So you should want your own cult as well, as long as you're leading them and gathering them unto the purpose that God gave you. So watch this. This is what he told him. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. So converting them, cleansing them, changing them. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Preaching to the nations and you're and creating disciples that preach the message that God gave you to help. Whatever your product is, make sure it's in line with the scripture. Make sure it's good with God. Forget that OnlyFans crap. Forget the drugs. Forget all of that. You setting yourself up to prosper for a moment. But remember, the wicked are reserved for a day. What profit of the man that gains the world only to lose his soul? So make sure your product or service is God approved. Not Better Business Bureau approved. God approved. That way you don't have to worry about them pulling the rug up from under you when you reach it, uh, your new heights, right? 
So it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. I'm trying to hear. I need somebody to tell me where it says in the scripture that when it comes to business, you don't go to the Bible. He said, lean not into your own understanding. He will direct all thy paths. I mean, I mean, I know we grow up and then we start making meanings for ourselves. But the word all should just just cover everything, shouldn't it? I mean, can I get a unison in here, a choir? Shouldn't the word all mean all? Yes, sir. Okay, so why do we grow up and start saying, well, it, I, I don't really think it means, no, you don't feel, you don't, you, you, you're led by your flesh, your, your feelings. You can't put words in God's mouth and you ain't righteous enough or clean enough to correct him. So if he says he will direct all thy paths, that means business too. So this is why for any of those that have a problem with me teaching business on the Sabbath, he said he will direct all thy paths, all. And it is well to do good on the Sabbath day. But if you don't share those beliefs with me, then I guess you're not my, my tribe then, right? Okay, so I can't force you to, but check this out. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And you've been commanded to be a beacon. And lo, I am with you always. I got to keep emphasizing that all, even until the end of the world. Amen. So we got to, you know, we got to realize, y'all, that if you want to reach this position where you have a decent following, I'm not talking about numbers of, of subscribers, like useless numbers and where the people like, I got freaking uh, um, almost 30,000 subscribers, but the majority of them only came here during that last trend of chat GPT. But then I have this core base of people that no matter what I'm talking about, they're riding with me. That's what I'm talking about. Who cares about if your stuff gets to a hundred thousand or a million, if, if the people don't rock with you. So you're supposed to focus on the people that rock with you, not the numbers. Who cares? Who cares? Okay. So who cares? But the people that speak what you speak, focus on hurt, helping them and servicing them. All right. So teaching them to observe all things that he commanded you, he's with you always. So watch this. It's just another precept. It says, and he said unto him, go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Listen, y'all. I need y'all to take out a notepad and write out a couple hours that you can just go and get to know yourself. I don't know. Go to the park. Go to the tennis court. Go, go somewhere. And also... Once you do that part and you realize that you have certain things about yourself that are unique, then I want you to start searching for those things online. Blogs, forums, articles, YouTube channels, Instagram accounts. I guarantee you, you're going to find people that have those same or similar interests. Those people can become your disciples. Those people can help you spread the message. I promise you, like, listen, I promise you, this is not mystical, magical. There's no such thing as luck. God does not make mistakes. The people that are successful is on purpose. Even if they don't know it, they used a formula. God don't make mistakes. Acts chapter one, verse eight. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So have you ever wondered 
why in 2023, almost 3,000 plus years later, everybody still knows the name God and Christ. I mean, most of us do a video today and nobody remember it tomorrow. Most people wrote a book. It was popular during that year and you never heard about them again. You ever heard of a one hit wonder where their song was popping? Like it, it was in everybody's car. Like it was, you couldn't go nowhere. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Now, where the heck is Jay Quan? So this shows you that fame is not the same as what we're talking about right here. These people can get in front of audiences, but if you're a one hit wonder, that means the sheep didn't hear your voice. They didn't resonate with you. It was fake. This is why I told you guys to pull something unique out of yourself. Find your real purpose. So you don't have an artificial following. You need a ride or die, chick. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, so it says, but ye shall receive power. This is when he was bestowing these blessings and the gifts onto the disciples because he was about to leave. Ye shall receive power. Power to do what? Continue the message. Continue healing people. So how do you do that? How do you position yourself to leverage others to profit recycle? How do you find what's unique within you? Make a big bang. Then go and join other people's audiences. Bless that audience. Educate that audience. Heal that audience. Teach that audience. And then give members of that audience the power to continue doing that. And then it takes on a life of its own. And then you can't cut it off. You can't turn it off if you wanted to. That's what I'm working on this year, y'all. I mean, listen. I've been here since 2015, man. I wanted to keep going way past me. Like I got kids and then they're going to have kids. So when I look at my kids, I don't see my son. I see a forest. Okay. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, it says, In all things that thou hast heard among me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So I told y'all at the beginning of this, there's nothing new under the sun. If you thought MLMs and network marketing companies and all of that stuff was something new, the reason it works is because they follow biblical business principles. People don't like them because they grow at a pace that's just like unheard of. On top of that, most of the ones nowadays, the, the message sucks. They don't even really like really promote their, their offer or their ser service. They just make money by recruiting. But the offer that Christ and his disciples has is the kingdom. So that's a perfect offer right there. And they recruit. So that's how you do an MLM. You need to have a good product that actually helps people and recruit. OK, most MLMs just got the recruiting part down packed. And their offers, their services suck. <laughs> so, but you see this right here. This is an MLM, right? Ain't this an MLM? It says, and the things that you heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. So this is why you want to find your tribe. Because if they resonate with what, you res with, with what you're on, you can pass off what you've been able to achieve to them and they'll continue the message and that'll, it'll snowball. Dude, listen. Dr. Miles Monroe, I'm going to bring him up one more time. Dr. Miles Monroe died in 2020, uh, 2014, but his new channels being created on YouTube every day, repurposing his content, spreading his message everywhere, selling his audio books, his CDs. Like people don't even buy CDs, but they buy his CDs and his books and stuff and his seminars and all of that. <laughs> like, dude, this stuff works. It works, man. Marcus said, all means all. Yes, Lord. <laughs> DeWine said, it's inside you, Pauls. You just have to find it. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hey, what's up, Colleen? I haven't seen you in a while. Stanley Jean said, he was my mentor. Wow. Okay. That's where it's at. 
That's where it's at. Okay, so I need you like imprint this one, imprint this one in your in your psyche right here. This one right here. All in the in the things that thou has heard among me, among many witnesses, uh, heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. So if you're on this podcast, let's say you're on this podcast, you go on there with with 10 things that will literally help and reshape your market, your industry, whatever your product or service is, 10 reasons that will reshape it. And it convinces the audience, like it, they resonate with it. Now, when you get to the end, you're going to have those people. And you can just literally say, yo, those that believe what I believe, you can follow me and you can go and get other followers too. I mean, you're not going to have to really sell, are you? This is why I tell you guys, position. Positioning is so important. Usually people just create a product and immediately just try to go make money. And immediately they don't focus on the unique positioning about themselves. What's going to be different? What would be the reason for purchasing your stuff? J. Cole had to change his style because he sounded too similar to Jay-Z. It got him a little praise at the beginning, but after a while, it's like, yo, you're just a clone. So he switched up the style. And now he's unique and now he's he's good. But at first, I'm like, dude, if I want to hear Jay-Z's reasonable out uh, reasonable doubt album, I just go get reasonable doubt. What I'm gonna get your album for. It's the same thing. Why would people buy your course, your book, if you're saying the exact same thing of somebody else? You're not, you don't have any unique positioning, no new value to bring to them. Focus on value intensity. Value intensity. How do you help the customer or the client like far more than anybody else? I always tell you guys, the, the company that cares the most can make the most. The company that cares the most can make the most. Christ didn't go out there with a PayPal button. He didn't go out there with a cash app, right? He went out there and he just helped. He just healed. And he knew that his reward was going to be reciprocated because it was promised by his father. So it's the exact same thing with you guys. If you go out and you help, you heal, you, you teach, you educate and stuff, you don't have to worry about it. Like people are going to buy your stuff. God is going to move their hearts. He's going to move their hearts to, to work with you, to want to work with you. So focus on skills, mastering your skill, crafting your, your message and everything. And then you just go and jump in front of these audiences. And your believers out of those audiences will want to work with you. That's it. All right. So Luke 14. Hey, Colleen. She said she true, true mission. Uh, catch your presentation when I can. Always sharing the truth. All praises to the most high. Yes. All right. Luke 14, 23. It says, and the Lord said unto the servants, go out into the highways and hedges. Now, I need y'all to pay attention. Remember, a city on a hill that cannot be hid. I think I'm saying that right. If I'm not, like, correct me, y'all. But it's, it's something like that. A city that's on a hill cannot be hid. You need to look at yourself like that. How can you position yourself? Find your uniqueness to where you stand out. I do it every time, every single time on purpose. Anytime I want to like get the word out about something, I study and I make sure that I bring something that's unique so that it can be intensely valuable. To the people that's already been dealing with the BS out there. When I when I started with the Godfather of Drop Servicing, I already saw these other drop servicing videos. I'm like, that's no, that's not gonna change nobody's life. It might make them some chump change, but they won't really move the needle. Then I did it with the Asset Empire. Now on June 17th, I'm doing it with the money highways, taking something that other people, SEO, would think as boring as something that's that is going to take forever to become profitable and all of that. And I'm shortening the time for profit. That's completely different from anybody else in the SEO industry. So you have to position yourself first uniquely. Then you leverage others. Then you profit recycle. So it says, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. So you have to make this list that I'm telling y'all. Make a list of the people that have your audience. 
He didn't say stay in and just become the best, but nobody ever hear about it. No, get out your shell. Okay, go out, go out on podcasts, buy shout outs, start uh, putting out content, create some books, do all of that stuff. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. So compel, you got to draw them to you, guys. The scriptures say we're supposed to be winning souls. You're supposed to be winning souls. When you go in front of somebody's audience on a podcast, when you craft a, a, a post for somebody's shout out on their, on, their, on their account or something like that, craft it to where you are seeing through the influencer and see straight to their audience and, and, and craft it in a way that you can win souls. Okay. It says, compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to the my part. He's not talking about yours. This is why a lot of people go up and then go down. Pause. Because they're gathering people to themselves and not to the most high. So your purpose needs to be aligned with God. It needs to be God approved, like I said. Good God. Okay. You like, it needs to be aligned. So if you're out there trying to, if you're watching this right now, you're thinking I'm going to help you grow your OnlyFans, you got another thing coming. If you got some music and you shooting up our brothers in it, I'm not helping you. And I pray that it never be successful. Sorry, but not sorry. Okay. Make sure it's God approved because he didn't put that crap in you. Okay. Find your purpose. Spend some time with yourself. Find your purpose and then go attach your purpose to these audiences that are already built out. They're already built out. People already spent years building audiences that's literally just full of your believers just waiting for you to introduce yourself. Don't be shy. You got greatness in you. All praise to the most high. I'm grateful that you guys were here from, uh, with us, me and my family, and with the spirit of the most high and his son. On this Sabbath day, um, pray y'all get some rest. It is 1222. I'm going to get some rest and chill with my family, the La Familia, and everything like that, and probably get something to eat. Um, make sure you come to this channel during the hours of 5 and 7 p.m. during the week. That's when I serve. That's when I become the greatest servant I can so that I can become the greatest salesperson in the world because I want to help spread the message. And the only way you're going to do that is to serve, 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 serve. So between the hours of 5 and 7 p.m. during the week, that's when you guys can come here on this channel for free. And I can help you guys with your businesses, your projects, your products, your sales, your traffic and all of that stuff. Love you.